It's been just over a week since Trump won the 2024 presidential election, and already we're starting to see some major changes happen. Not only are we getting intel from Eric Berger, who's a trusted source in the space industry, that SLS or the Artemis program may be canceled completely, but Elon Musk recently announced a new organization called the Department of Government Efficiency, and this might have a huge impact on the space industry, considering government organizations like the FAA and other entities like Fish and Wildlife have slowed things down for Starship. In fact, as we're just days away from the sixth launch of Starship, Elon Musk shared that the absurd regulations will get worse every year unless we push back, everything will become illegal. Now, this was in reference to a quote from Elon Musk saying, it really should not be possible to build a giant rocket faster than paper can move from one desk to another. But Elon is not just talking the talk. Apparently, they will be walking the walk. Elon Musk, Donald Trump, and Vivek Ramaswamy. Now, in case you haven't been obsessively checking the X app, maybe you decided to leave X, or maybe you just haven't heard about this new Doge department. I did not make that up. It's literally called Doge or the Department of Government Efficiency. I figured I should read you the statement. This is from the Trump Vance transition, and it's just been announced from Donald J. Trump. He writes, I am pleased to announce that the great Elon Musk, working in conjunction with American patriot Vivek Ramaswamy, will lead the Department of Government Efficiency, or DOGE. Together, these two wonderful Americans will pave the way for my administration to dismantle government bureaucracy, slash excess regulations, cut wasteful expenditures, and restructure federal agencies essential to the Save America movement. This will send shockwaves through the system and anyone involved in government waste, which is a lot of people, stated Mr. Musk. It will become potentially the Manhattan Project of our time. Republican politicians have dreamed about the objectives of Doge for a very long time. To drive this kind of drastic change, the Department of Government Efficiency will provide advice and guidance from outside of government and will partner with the White House and Office of Management and Budget to drive large-scale structural reform and create an entrepreneurial approach to government never seen before. I look forward to Elon and Vivek making changes to the federal bureaucracy with an eye on efficiency and at the same time making life better for all Americans. Importantly, we will drive out the massive waste and fraud which exists throughout our annual $6.5 trillion of government spending. They will work together to liberate our economy and make the U.S. government accountable to we the people. Their work will conclude no later than July 4th, 2026, a smaller government with more efficiency and less bureaucracy will be the perfect gift to America on the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. I am confident they will succeed. So that statement went out November 12th, so just a day before this recording, and it has already just seemingly broken the internet. But what I want to focus on is what kind of reform or change this could bring to the space industry, considering a lot of us have, you know, groaned and moaned about the hangups from the FAA and seemingly inefficiency, lack of resources, just why we've had to wait so long to get uh, Starship launch licenses. When, for example, with this last launch, the FAA said that they would issue the launch license in August, then they moved that date to late November of 2024, which obviously they something happened behind the scenes, and they were able to expedite that and grant that license actually October 12th, and in less than 24 hours after that, October 13th, we saw the first catch of the booster, which was pretty much they aced it on their first try, which is still mind blowing. Hey, I just wanted to take a moment and thank everyone who has supported Ellie in Space. I can't believe how quickly my channel is growing and developing. And it's been really exciting to interact with so many people from around the world very interested in what's going on with SpaceX and Starship. But speaking of development, I've recently found myself wanting to dedicate more time to self-improvement. With my job being a content creator, it's really easy to mistake time on social media as being related to work when I know that many of those hours are spent just mindlessly doom scrolling. 
I decided to try an app called Blinkist to replace some of that doom scrolling with micro learning. So far, I've listened to five blinks in just two days. I absolutely love how compact the books are and I already feel like I'm gaining a new perspective. My favorite blink so far is hashtag positivity. I feel like for me, it's really easy to get sucked into negative thinking traps. Since digesting the blink, I felt really in control of my own happiness and more positive, which who wouldn't want that? The Blinkist app gives you actionable summaries from over 6,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. Plus, I feel better internally knowing that some of that social media time is actually going into learning something or self-development. After all, the typical social media user now spends two hours and 23 minutes per day using social platforms. And you can ditch bad habits with Blinkist. 80% of their users have replaced doom scrolling with micro learning. I'm really excited to continue using Blinkist and I feel it's more approachable than say a three hour podcast. There are also endless books to choose from. You can join the 31 million Blinkist users and get 40% off the Blinkist annual premium. Start your seven day free trial by clicking the link in the description box or scanning the QR code on screen. Thank you Blinkist for sponsoring this video and check the link below to subscribe. Now, not only will we probably see a lot of reform, at least when it comes to signing off on Starship launches, I think we're going to see a much higher launch cadence in 2025 for Starship launches, which is great news for us as fans. But it's also something that needs to happen because SpaceX has so many milestones and objectives before we can even, for example, even have the human landing system for the return to the moon, but also to go to Mars. But I think one of the crazier things that may be a consequence of this new Doge or Department of Government efficiency is SLS or the Artemis program being threatened. In fact, Eric Berger posted about this saying, quote, to be clear, we are far from anything being settled. But based on what I'm hearing, it seems at least 50-50 that NASA's Space Launch System rocket will be canceled. Not Block 1B, not Block 2, all of it. There are other ways to get Orion to the moon. And it seems the majority of you support a cancellation of SLS. I posted a poll about it with over 2,200 votes, with 86% of you saying yes, it should be canceled. In fact, an opinion article that's getting a lot of attention and makes some pretty good points by Michael Bloomberg, which you may or may not be a fan of him, but he wrote an article saying NASA's $100 billion moon mission is going nowhere. He's right about the fact that the Artemis program is years behind schedule and billions over budget. And he thinks that we, as the taxpayers, should demand answers and change from the next president. He wrote this article just about two weeks before the presidential election. So now we know who the next president is going to be. And I think it's clear that Trump already wants to make swift and uh, pretty massive changes all across the board. I'm kind of wondering what we're going to see come Inauguration Day, how many things are going to be cut, slashed, thrown away, scrapped, etc., uh, I think that it's time to buckle up because it's going to be a pretty wild year. But let me just read you some of the points in this article because I think they're really uh, well spoken. So Bloomberg points out that NASA has already spent nearly $100 billion without getting anyone off the ground. And this complex and outrageous waste is still spiraling upward. Recently, NASA's Inspector General estimates the program has so far burned through $23.8 billion. Each launch will likely cost at least $4 billion, which is quadruple initial estimates. This exceeds private sector costs many times over, yet it can launch only about once every two years and, unlike SpaceX's rockets, can't be reused. So then he points out that even if Space Launch System is completed, it isn't powerful enough to actually get anyone to the moon, at least not in its current configuration. It will instead deposit its capsule called Orion into what's called near rectilinear halo orbit. And here the capsule, which despite $20 billion being poured into it, currently has a faulty heat shield must rendezvous with a landing spacecraft, which will then take the astronauts to the lunar surface. 
and getting the landing spacecraft into orbit before it can be propelled toward the moon to meet Orion is also a complex process. <sighs> and then and then Michael Bloomberg goes on to talk about Gateway. This will probably cost more than $5 billion to build, require about $1 billion in annual maintenance, and he thinks it has no clear rationale. I mean, it's really for communication, the idea being in future missions, Orion might dock at the gateway, two astronauts will exit and board the lander, and the remaining crew will sit in the station and observe their colleagues collecting rocks, as the article says. But Bloomberg also points out that NASA will be adding a second stage to the space launch system called Block 1B, and to accommodate this, NASA is erecting a new launch tower called ML2, which is expected to cost $2.7 billion. This is more than seven times the initial estimates, and it doesn't have a plausible completion date. The company building ML2 has billed the government for 850,000 overtime hours in the past two years. He also points out, and this is actually very important to note, NASA is canceling or postponing promising scientific programs, including the Veritas mission to Venus, the Viper lunar rover, and the NEO surveyor telescope intended to scan the solar system for hazardous asteroids as Artemis consumes ever more of the budget. So I thought that this was a really good article to point to, to basically just get the point across that this is wasting so much money and way behind schedule. And so whether I want it to be canceled or not, which I would be in support of finding a a cheaper method, probably mostly using SpaceX, I think regardless, we're going to see some sweeping change with this Trump transition. And I would not be surprised to see Uh, SLS get canceled. Plus, usually when we see something like that come from Eric Berger, who is the author of Liftoff, uh, he's usually right. It might take a couple days or weeks for, for the news to come out, but he's usually pretty spot on. So as we wait for things to unfold, we are also just days away from the sixth launch of Starship, which is scheduled for Monday, November 18th. I will be down there. I'm looking forward to seeing this booster catch in person. And I'm also looking forward to the fact that I won't have to wake up so darn early. So um, hopefully I'll be more rested and not as as uh, as cranky and running on adrenaline. Well, of course, there will still be a lot of adrenaline running through me for this. But yeah, the launch window is going to open at 4 p.m. local Texas time, central time. And that is so that it will be daylight for the splashdown in the Indian Ocean. They've reconfigured the heat tiles on the ship. So this will allow for better observation during the day. And it'll just allow all of us to get just a little more sleep Unless, of course, you are in the part of the country where now you're going (laughs) to be a bit screwed. But I'm sure that you're going to be up watching it regardless. And if you guys want to support my channel, I have reopened the Mechazilla store. We have a newer design with the flame underneath the booster signifying what we saw on that last catch, the first ever catch of the super heavy booster. My, I have watched that video so many times and it just doesn't get old. But if you want to order one of these, they are available for a limited time. Then we're going to close the store and ship them all out. But thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. It has been such Uh, an amazing journey. And I'm really excited to see how many launches we have next year. There's a good possibility that we could have one Starship launch, at least one Starship launch every single month. And imagine how exciting that would be. Thanks for supporting my channel. I can't wait to see you for live coverage. I'll be streaming from the roof of Margaritaville with Joe Tagmeyer, just like we always do, except for that one time where we weren't there in person. But we will be back to regular programming and hopefully you can join us. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.